That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they waited away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown in the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for the one sown in the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Being satisfied, I will hold my, your people in my heart. I will break their hearts of stone, give them uh, hearts for love alone. And uh, this next song talks about hearts as well. Lord, let my heart be good soil, because Jesus is talking about the different types of soil. So I thought, well, let's sing this one too, okay? So thank you, guys. <laughs> Lord, let my heart be good soil. The parable of the sower. The sower. This is a uh, famous, uh, famous painting by a fellow... Uh, fellow who was a very famous painter. Uh, anybody know who uh, painted that? He also illustrated the children's book, Go Dog Go. Maybe? No, just kidding. Vincent Van Gogh. Okay, that, was a, that was a bad attempt at humor. Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, the sower. Now, when we think of sowing seeds, now we think planting for crops. You don't take the seed, which you pay a lot of money for, which sometimes has fertilizer on it or, 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 or a herbicide on it or fungicides baking, you know, right on the seed, coating the seed. And it's expensive stuff. You don't just take a handful and throw it out there. You put it in, in, the, in the drill or, or the seed, or that, and, you, and you're, you're carefully preparing the soil. Well, this is an interesting one because Jesus talks about someone who just takes the seed and throws it out willy-nilly. Broadcasts it, takes a handful and flings it up. And that's that picture there. He's walking along, some goes on the path, some goes on the rocks, thorns, and some lands on the good soil. It's the environment that Jesus talks about, the soil types, uh, what happens to the seeds, their ability to grow uh, for the purposes of sowing. You, you sow the seed to produce fruit. And Jesus tells this parable. It's interesting, we, in our scripture reading, we started uh, in Matthew, you know, 13, 1 through 9, and we skipped to chapter 18, or verse 18. Well, what happened to verses 9 through 18? Well, that's when the disciples came up to Jesus and scratched, scratched their heads going, uh, you know, Jesus, um, you told us that thing about the sower, and we have, we don't know what you're talking about. Could you please explain that to us? We don't have a clue. And so he says, here then, the parable of the sower. He explains, he explains it to the disciples. Uh, and thankfully he does that because he explains it to us as well. 
There's all sorts of realities we, uh, we can deal, we have to deal with, that we contend with uh, in life, uh, disease, rejection, uh, death. Here's another, here's another uh, picture of, of what, how, the, how the sower, when he says a sower sowed, this is what they look like. That's how they did it uh, back then. Uh, we have distractions, we have loneliness, we have discouragements. Uh, and so a lot of times in our lives, uh, and at times uh, uh, that when everything's just going as right as rain, you know, everything's just perfect. In fact, our lives often seem to be the parable of the sower in living color. It's kind of a bit there, done that sort of parable for us. Uh, when you read it, you can recognize yourself in it, at least I do. I mean, I find myself, you know, just uh, reading through it and going through the studies, like, okay, yeah. Soil, on the, uh, some seed on the path, yeah, been, been on the path, I've been in the path before. Rocks, yep, my heart's been that way too. And, and thorns, oh yeah, I've got plenty of distractions, other things that take my attention. And uh, good soil, yeah, once in a while. <laughs> The ratio is interesting. It's three to one. Path, rocks, thorns, and then good soil. And I think that's, Jesus understood that that's what it is like. You know? so there's a lot of things that can crowd out what God wants us, wants to grow in our hearts. And that's why I like that song. Lord, let my heart be good soil. There's times when it's hard as rock. And break that away. There's times when it's cold as ice. Warm it. Lead me on your way. Help when I get lost, when I get off your way. You know, it's a, it's a, it reminds us of the realities of, of our life. And, uh, and sometimes we look at this parable and we go, you know, that it's, it's three to one ratio. There's more, the odds are against the, the sower sowing. <laughs> on the goods, there, it's, it's a lot uh, uh, harder to land on the good soil than the other types. Uh, and it's easy to be discouraged because of that. Other people have, in the scriptures have been discouraged. Imagine with me, it's, uh, it's the Arabian, uh, there's a path, there's, there's the birds on the path, okay? Happens quickly. The birds, in fact, uh, we had a wedding here yesterday, and um, we have a policy, you can't throw rice. Because it's like ball bearings on the cement. You ever walk on rice on the, on the cement? It's just, they'll slip right on it. And also, some birds eat it, and that's not good for them. Because <laughs> they come quickly. You throw seeds on the bird path, it's not going not gonna to be around very long. That's what happens to it. Imagine the Arabian desert. Not dessert. I typed in dessert. And Google said, do you mean desert? <laughs> yeah, desert, not dessert. <laughs> the Arabian desert. Camel, sand. We see a man trudging along, his shoulders bent, his head hangs in despair. He's the poster child of exhaustion. This sorry looking man finally hides himself in a cave. He thinks he's the only one left. He throws himself on the ground, sighs towards heaven. He says, enough, Lord, enough. Take my life, I've had enough. I'm the only one who cares about you. Everyone else is trying to kill me, just, just, Make it all go away. I'm no better than my ancestors. Well, who would say such a thing as that? Well, his name was Elijah. Elijah the prophet. One of the greatest prophets of God spoke the word. The, the, the word came into his heart. And he said, you know, if I don't speak it, it's like a fire burning in my bones. So he spoke the word. He, his heart was good soil. He spoke it. And a short time earlier, just, just, just a couple days earlier than this, he had a contest in a place called Mount Carmel. And Cole and Kelly worked at Mount Carmel Camp. And, and this is at their camp. Uh, there he is. They had a contest between the prophets of Baal and God. And Elijah won. 450 prophets of Baal had, it, had their turn at trying to get the altar lit on fire. And, and Elijah said, go ahead, you go first. After you, nothing happened. He prayed, fire came down, took it all. All the fire came down. Licked up the 
wood, the bulls, the, the, the meat that was on there, the stones, just nothing but a crater left. And everybody thought it was great. The Lord is God. God answered his prayer. He was the embodiment of faith and courage of standing strong in the faith in the face of opposition. But what made him want to throw in the towel? It's an interesting story. What went wrong? Uh, well, part of it is, is, is in the, his lament when he was in the cave. He says, I'm the only one left, Lord. I'm the only one who loves you, who cares about you, who cares about your word. And, uh, and now I'm alone. Uh, it wasn't that true. It, it was, that wasn't true. He also thought that once the battle was done, you know, once he won, everything was going to be hunky-dory. Hey, good, we won. Well, nothing. Uh, there's a phrase. Nature abhors a vacuum. That's a fancy way for saying it doesn't stay the same. It just doesn't stay the same. Uh, you've done this in your own garden. You get a nice garden, you got, the, you got the ground all ready to plant, and then you get delayed for some reason, you come back, and it's full of what? Well, weeds! Where'd those come from? I didn't plant weeds. Well, the, you left it alone, they came in. I mean, it's, uh, he thought that once this battle was done, it was going to, okay, evil's taken care of. Well, no. Uh, the 450 prophets of Baal belonged to Queen Jezebel, <laughs> and they were on her side, and she uh, wasn't happy that he had them killed. Not happy at all. And so she said, well, you killed them. May the same thing happen to you, Elijah, if ever I ever get my hands on you. So he runs away, and he says, it's all over. Take my life. But God told Elijah something. I have preserved 7,000. 7,000 in Israel, none of which bent the knee to worship Baal. <coughs> the battle's going on, Elijah. The battle will continue. You were faithful. You stood up to him. You, you, know, you did what he, what he asked you to do. Uh, but you're not the only one engaged in it. You may think that way, and sometimes we think we're the only ones. That's, that's part of the, uh, the path, you know. We think we're the only ones. Give up. But there's always going to be others. There's always a remnant. There's always going to be a remnant. So don't let that discouragement uh, get a hold of you. Uh, don't think you're the only one. There's others out there. You may not see them, but they're there. And God is going to, uh, God's word will continue to be spread. Interestingly enough, the, uh, the next uh, soul that's interesting, uh, the rocks. The rocks. What's the ratio between the green and what's underneath the green? Just looking at that picture, what would you say? Some of you are pretty good at proportions, right? You measure the green part and then you measure the roots, how much, what would it be? It's not one to one. Eight to one? Eighty to twenty? Well, there's quite a bit under the ground that you can't see. You just see that little tiny plant. And boy, that's not really hanging on there much. Well, this thing's doing pretty good there, huh? Look at all those roots from that one little plant. Roots are important. Roots are important. The second batch of seeds ends up on a rocky ground. Immediately, the seed shoots up high stalks. Uh, there's no real soil, and so all the energy can't go down. There's, it's all hard, so it shoots right up. Looks great. Nice and tall, but there's no nourishment coming. First day of the heat, it withers away. That's what happens. When I was in the eighth grade, a uh, mini series came out, started January. Anybody know what uh, I'm talking about here? Roots! Very good. Uh, it, was, it was an interesting, uh, the TV didn't know how it was going to be received. They thought, you know what, let's just, let's just get it over right away. We'll play it every night it's before Sweeps Week. <laughs> they didn't think they thought it was going to be that. Well, it, was, uh, it won like 37 Emmy Award nominations, won nine of them, you know. Uh, 
Uh, some of you remember that. Roots. How many of you remember that? Remember that came on? This is before Netflix and DVDs. They actually had to tune in the channel. We had a we had a TV that we had to actually turn the knob to change the channel. Some of you young kids don't even know what I'm talking about. But and then when my twin brother and I was fighting over the channel, we take the knob off the TV. I have the channel changer. We fight over that. And then finally, my 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 other brother, my older brothers, he he kept it. He just was this older guy, he opened her hand and give me that thing. So then I went upstairs and found me the most flyers, and I could turn the channel on too. <laughs> I had to be a channel changer. Anyway, uh, it still holds the record at the highest, uh, third highest rated episode for any type of television series, the second most watched overall series in US TV history. Interesting, in, in a court, why? Well, because uh, I'm just just a survey here. How many of you have ancestors that came from a, a country other than the U.S.? And just just raise your hand. Okay. For many of us, May 17th has some sort of significance. <coughs> set the mind. What's set the mind? 17th of May. The region of Independence Day. Well, the sons of Norway have. A, have a party in Bemidji celebrating that. And, or uh, it's over at the Norwegian language village every year, every spring, every May. It's a big deal. Well, roots are important. Roots, we want to we find out where we went on in the past, where we came from, how we get here, the struggles that they have, the, the customs, the, 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 the food, of course. Uh, part of our bazaar, we honor that heritage. Uh, Lepsa, huh? Rumagra. I'm getting hungry already. Let, when are we going to start rolling that left side again, right? It comes. Well, likewise, Christians need to get in touch with our roots. And the Bible tells us this. What? We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, to understand what has gone before us, to know who brought us uh, forward in faith, uh, we realize it takes a complex root system to do it. It took a long time. It didn't happen overnight. In fact, some, some communities that made some churches out on the prairie uh, that came here, immigrants, it, it, it doesn't look like it, it's, nothing really changed. And all of a sudden, it, it took off. Well, that, the roots had to be built. Some churches struck up really quick, and they, they're not there anymore. You know, it just it changes, mostly due to the demographics. I mentioned uh, we had a wedding here yesterday. Uh, uh, Samantha Gunlinson and Brandon Pond, other Samantha and Brandon Pond. And uh, there, here's a wedding cover here. You can kind of see it, it's on the top. It's got a tree with the, with the heart with the initials carved in it. And I asked them the question yesterday. Well, how did that trunk get to be so so big? You know. Well, it took a, it took some time. You know, marriage takes some time, and there's roots. You gotta lay down the roots. It's important to have a good foundation, you know, when you when you get married. Well, roots are important in our family of faith, in our faith life as well, not just in a marriage, but in our faith. And and and, and the book of Hebrews, go back here, the book of Hebrews says we are surrounded by other people to help us in that. We're not alone. We're in this together. And uh, years ago, I was reading something about redwood trees. We drove out there. Remember that bull with the redwoods? Uh, he was little. And uh, okay, these are old trees. You know, we had a, there was one where we could drive the car through. You know, cut out. Anyway, I was reading about them in this little thing on the flat. You know, and, well, they grow in groves. They're groves, redwood groves. They're not solitary. Their roots intertwine. Interesting. That's why they can live so long. They're not standing on their own. <laughs> They're standing together. We uh, celebrated the 4th of July and, uh, recently, on July 4th, right? Uh, one, of the, one of the framers of the, of, the, of the early forefathers of the Constitution uh, said something similarly. He said, well, we will we will either hang together 
or we either hang together or we will surely hang separately. <laughs> now, somebody knows who said that. But you know, we gotta hang, we gotta stick together, guys. Otherwise, we will hang separately. Um, that's what this is about. Uh, roots. Roots. You need it. We need it. It's gotta be done. A thorny ground. Oops. Oh, I don't have those. Well, anyway, it's just a picture of thorns. Uh, what do thorns represent? Well, Jesus lists them. The cares of the world. The lure of wealth. And what does he say? It, it chokes the word. The word grows. It's, it's, it's the plant is growing, but all of the energy was diluted and sapped. And so it doesn't produce what it's, it's, it's growing, but there's no, there's no seeds. There's nothing, nothing coming out of it. It's there, but it's something to look at, but it's not accomplishing what it's supposed to do. There's a lot of distractions. There's things that can take our attention away. I, uh, I was visiting uh, after Alice, Alice Bear's uh, funeral, you know, in the, in the fellowship hall, and I was uh, visiting with uh, Russ Phillips. Russ is a, uh, let's see, he would be her, it's your nephew, Kurt, right? So it'd be her nephew, it'd be her nephew. Right. Your nephew, okay. So anyway, uh, I was visiting with, uh, uh, with Russ, and, uh, and I said, oh, what do you do? Well, I'm an electrician, and, you know, and just, and, and, uh, just talking to me, and I found him, he's, he's, a, he's a trap shooter, like shotgun and trap and all that. And, it's kind of cool because I, I tried to do that in North Dakota. The, the best I got was 24 out of 25. And I go kind of wondering, well, what's going on? Yeah, I've shot 500 in a row. 500 in a row? I'm like, are you kidding me? 500 shots in a row without missing. How do you do that? I was intrigued. How do you do that? I can't do that. He goes, well, you just got to concentrate on what you're doing all the time. Don't let your mind wander between shots. Just focus on what you're doing. Don't get distracted. Keep your mind on the job. You know, you're there to hit the bird. You know. Well, that really works. I go, you know what? That's going to end up in a sermon someday. <laughs> See, that was frightening. <laughs> be careful what you say in fellowship hall with me. It might end up in a sermon someday. Well, Jesus, there's a lot of things that can choke out the word. Distractions. Uh, another time, so we, the, the weeds uh, can come in. Thorns, things that can sap, sap the strength. That's what Jesus is talking about. And then the, finally, the sower goes on a solid ground. Solid ground. Think of the sower. Again, he scatters willy-nilly. He just throws it wherever. Throws it wherever. Wherever it goes. And uh, path, sometimes it's thorns, sometimes it's rocky ground. But it will land on the good soil too. There's good soil in here. There's other stuff that will try to croak it, but there's good soil here too. Again, that's why I like that song, Lord, let my heart be good soil. It's there already. Help break through, Lord. Help break through. It's about, it's about the Lord breaking into us. It's not about our strength doing it. It's about God breaking in. That's what the promise is. It's going to happen. There's good soil in there. Lord, open us up to that. Help my heart be that. Designed for it. Because your word will accomplish it. That's what we have the promise. We have the promise from Isaiah. It was read in the first uh, reading here. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making bread, uh, seed for the sower, bread for the eater, my word will do the same. My word will, uh, that goes from my mouth, will not return empty. It will accomplish that which I purpose. And it will increase thing for which I have sent it. It will do it. The word is active. The word, we're hearing it. 
it's going to work in our life. We pray that we are receptive to it, that our hearts be good soil. The grace that we have from Jesus, it's, something's going to fall on there. It's going to fall. And guess what? 30, 60, 100 fold. It's not just going to be a little bit. It'll be in abundance. We don't have to worry about the size of the harvest. We can let God take care of that. It will grow. We might see it. We might not. But remember that little, that little picture here. I'll just go back to that one. There's more than meets the eye. And that's a good thing. Thanks be to God. Please stand and let's uh, confess now. <laughs>